Hey guys, so today I have my final makeup spending roundup of 2021. So I'm going to be sharing all of the makeup that I purchased in the last quarter of the year. And then I'm also going to be wrapping things up by sharing my total amount that I spent on makeup in 2021. This is a series I've been doing on my channel mainly just to kind of hold myself accountable to my goal of intentional makeup spending. This year I didn't have any kind of strict budget or rules or low buys or anything like that because I do feel like I've gotten to a place with my makeup spending where I don't need rigid structure or rules. I just feel like I've developed a very healthy relationship with makeup and makeup spending. So quarter four was definitely my biggest spending quarter of 2021 as far as makeup goes. Um, I did spend more this quarter than I did in the previous three quarters. And I think that makes total sense just with all the different holiday and Black Friday sales. I did take advantage of a few Black Friday sales, but I still feel very good about most of these purchases. There were a couple that maybe I regret buying, but overall I'm enjoying all these products. I did just post my top five and bottom five makeup purchases of the year, which I can link below for you. Um, also, before we get into it, this kind of silver and gold like New Year's Eve makeup look should be up on my Instagram. On my Instagram reels, I used both of my makeup basket palettes, my Urban Decay Naked Wild West and my ABH Sultry palette. So that's what's going on on my eyes today. If you want to see how this look came together, check out my Instagram. So let's go ahead and share the products that I purchased over the last quarter. These are all the things I bought from October through December. And this is only products I bought with my own money. It doesn't include PR or any gifts that I might have received from people. This is just stuff I bought myself. So the first order that I placed in quarter four was an Ulta order and this was specifically for a video, my video where I tested out products that you thought I would like. This Ulta order ended up coming out to a total of $49.45. The first thing I purchased was the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. This I paid $10 for and this primer I ended up actually really liking. I'm not a huge primer person, I'm not a big believer in primers, but as far as primers go, I do think this actually does something. It's a little bit gripping and it kind of just smooths out my skin really nicely. It's a nice texture. It's got kind of a tacky feel to it that I feel like just kind of holds on to makeup really well. So I've really been enjoying that primer. Then the next product from that order was the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I like this so much that it is my new favorite foundation. This was included in my Best Discoveries of 2021 video. And I think I did use an Ulta coupon because this normally retails for $16, I believe, and I got it for $12.80. I think I used, maybe it was like a 20% off one item or something like that. So got a little bit of money off there. The next product from that Ulta order was the CoverGirl Outlast Ulta Matte liquid lipstick in the shade Bella Bellini. And admittedly, I think I've only used this once and it was for that video. And that's just because this is not really a color that I wear this time of year, <laughs> but I think I will be getting a lot more use out of this in the spring and summer. This is a really fun, just corally orange shade. Based on my first impressions in that video, I did really like the formula and this was $11. Next from that order was the NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner Stick in the shade Rose Gold. This is a really nice eyeliner formula and I really want to pick up some more shades of this in the future because it actually lasts pretty well in the waterline, at least this shade does. And this is really the kind of shade that I'm only going to use in the waterline because it's a very brightening, like pearly rose gold color, really pretty shade. Um, maybe I'd smudge it on my lower lash line. This comes in a really extensive shade range with some, with some really fun and unique colors, so I definitely plan on picking up more of these in the future. Really enjoying this. This was $8. And then the last product from that Ulta order was this Ulta pencil sharpener. I do include makeup tools in this makeup spending roundup just because to me that does kind of count as a makeup purchase, but this is a great pencil sharpener for four bucks. Highly recommend. I was in need of a new one because mine I'd had for so long that it stopped working. It just like wouldn't sharpen things anymore. So this is so good and really affordable, so I highly recommend that. So those are the items from that first Ulta order, which came out to $49.45 total, and that does include any kind of tax or shipping. I don't think I had to pay shipping for this, but just in case you're wondering, it does include tax and things like that. The next order that I placed in quarter four this year was from Sephora, and I only bought the one product that I needed, or the one product that I was going to the website to purchase, and that was the NYX not NYX, the LYS, I guess because there's a Y in the middle, I, my wires got crossed in my brain, but anyway. This is the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Kindness, another favorite from the year. This was also included in my Best of 2021 video. Love this blush. This total came out to $17.28. I think Sephora is having just free shipping on all orders right now, so that just includes the cost of this plus tax. So 
that was another win. And then the third order that I placed for that video was from Sigma's website, and this was the Sigma Enchanted palette. This is the only thing I bought from their website. I did use an affiliate code, so I got like 10% off, so I ended up paying $47.63 for this. And this palette, I've been on a little bit of a roller coaster with trying to figure out my thoughts on it, but I have learned to like it more than I did initially. I did a Seven Looks One palette on this back in November, so if you wanna hear my thoughts on it and see a bunch of looks, I will link that for you, but I think I'm glad that I have have this though. I think I will enjoy this. The brush is rattling around in there. <laughs> but I think I will enjoy this in the spring especially because this does make me think of the springtime. So then there was a little gap between that order and the next order that I placed which was from Urban Decay in November. They were having I think a singles day sale. Apparently that's a day now. I think it's 11-11 which is also Veterans Day, right? But anyway, um, their singles day sale, they, a bunch of their products were marked down to $11, so I decided to take advantage because there were a few things that were marked down that I was interested in trying. I ended up paying a total of $55.62. The first product that I picked up was their brow blade. I had just heard so many good things about this, and I'd been wanting to try a brow pen for a while, just because I know so many people love that format for a brow product. So this is a dual-ended product. It comes with a waterproof pencil on one side and an ink stain on the other, and that ink stain is like a little brush tip. And this is actually growing on me. This is what I'm wearing in my brows today, and I do like the look that I get with this. Typically, I'll fill in kind of the tail of my brows with the pencil, and then I'll use the brush tip on the front part of my brow. And I really do like how I'm able to get true hair-like strokes with this. I feel like that's just not a look you can really get with any other type of brow product. There's certainly a learning curve with that marker. It's taken me a while to get the hang of it. The only thing is, I got the shade Taupe Trap. Usually Taupe is my shade in any brow product. I do find this particular taupe to be a little bit on the warm side, a little bit warmer than I typically prefer, but it works fine for me. I am glad I bought this because I just, I don't know, I was just curious about it and I am enjoying it. I think I will use it all the way up and enjoy it to the very end. The next product I got from Urban Decay that I've been enjoying so much, this might be my favorite of all the Urban Decay things that I bought, is the 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Overdrive. This is a beautiful emerald green color. This color caught my eye when I saw it on their site and it was one of the products marked down to $11. And I did look around to see if there were any drugstore brands that made a similar shade and I couldn't find any that had like a true emerald green like this that wasn't too teal or that wasn't too like light lime green-esque. And this is just the perfect, I mean it definitely is a little bit teal, but to me it just kind of reminds me of the color of a Christmas tree. So I've been wearing this a ton throughout the holiday season. I've been loving just wearing this as a winged liner. So pretty, very glad I bought that. Um, and this is a great eyeliner formula. I definitely wouldn't recommend paying full price for it, but if you can ever find it on sale, it's very creamy. They make some really pretty colors, so um, really enjoying that. I also repurchased their Lash Freak in a mini size, because this is normally 13 and it was, again, marked down to 11. So got a little bit of money off, although then I saw that a few days later for Black Friday, they had the full size marked down to, I think, $10? I think it was less than what I paid for this. It might have been like $10 to $13. Anyway, I was kind of wishing that I had just gotten the full size, but I'm glad to have the mini because I did have the full size in the past, and I'm curious to see how long the mini will last in comparison with the full size, so I'm kind of glad I got the mini anyway. I haven't opened it yet, as you can see, it's still in the box. I'm waiting until I use up my other black mascara that I'm using currently, but I am really excited to crack into this. This was one of my favorite mascaras of last year. So dramatic, just insane volume. If you like extreme volume and if you want your lashes to look fake, this is the mascara for you. But it is very high maintenance, can be a little clumpy, so if you're not into that, you would probably hate it. The next product from Urban Decay was one I totally wasn't even planning on buying, but I just saw that they happened to have a mini of this, again, marked down to $11, and they only had a couple shades left, and one of them looked like a shade that would work really well for me, and it totally does. This is a shade 20 CP, and this is a mini of their Stay Naked Correcting Concealer. I love getting minis of products because, obviously, since I try a fair amount of makeup, it takes me a while to go through full sizes of things, so when I'm not sure I'm going to like something, it's always nice to try it in a mini first. And I'm glad I got the mini of this because I don't love it. It's just not as much coverage as I like in a concealer. Um, they do claim that this is full coverage and it's totally not, it's like light to medium coverage. But the shade works really well. It does sit really nicely on the under eyes though, I, I do like that about it. it it's 
very kind of thin, lightweight, doesn't crease really badly, but I'm just wishing it had a little more coverage. But I'm glad I got that just to try it. And then another thing that I've been wanting to try for a while was the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I also got a mini of this. I tried this a long time ago in the past and I kind of just wanted to try it again to see if my feelings changed on it. This is the one ounce size, so I'm glad I got the mini so far. I don't really feel like I have a strong opinion on this. I don't feel like it makes a huge difference as far as making my makeup last longer. But then again, I don't really feel like I need my makeup to be the longest wearing ever, just with my lifestyle. I don't, I'm not wearing my makeup for like 20 hours straight, you know? So, um... Yeah, but I'm glad I got it just to kind of quell my curiosity. I think it'll be a nice thing to have, especially if I am ever wearing or trying to get my makeup to last for a really long time. Or sometimes I'll do friends makeup for various events where they do need it to last a long time. So that's nice to have on hand. So that was that Urban Decay order. The total came out to $55.62, which I feel like is a pretty good deal for all of these high-end products and of course three of them were minis, three minis, two full-size products. The next very small purchase that I made was from Z Palette. I was looking for just a small magnetic compact that would fit one magnetic single shadow and the only one that I could find that would fit both my clarity singles which are giant pans and my regular sized ColourPop singles was this one from Z Palette. So I will link this below in case you're looking for something similar. I think this was five bucks and then I did also pay for shipping so my total came out to $9.64, which I feel like is kind of a lot, but this was the only one I could find that I, that would work for me. So this will be nice because now if I ever wanna roll in like a single shadow into my makeup basket, um, I can easily do that and keep it in one place rather than having to pull like my giant magnetic palette into my makeup basket. So very happy I got that. Then I placed a couple orders for Black Friday. The first one was Kosas, as you know, and I did post my Black Friday haul, so I won't spend too much time talking about these products. I might update you on some of my thoughts on them if I've developed my thoughts any further. But for this Kosas order, I spent only $43 and I got three full-sized items, which was such a good deal. One of them was a gift with purchase. This was their um, Color and Light Pressed Powder Duo in the shade Papaya 1972. So far, really enjoying this. I shared my thoughts in my Black Friday haul, but I really like how these are glowy without having like sparkle in them. Really pretty formula. Um, a little bit powdery, both of these. Um, and the blush is very pigmented, even though it looks like a very light shade, but I am really enjoying this. I also got their Revealer Concealer, and if you saw me apply this, um, I ended up getting the shade 2W, and this shade was so yellow, so, so yellow. So I ended up contacting customer service and asking if I could exchange it for the shade 1.5C, which looked like a much better match for me. And they did send me that replacement and they told me I could just pass on the other one to a friend. So that was really nice. I'm glad that I didn't have to send this back because like, what are they gonna do with an, an already opened concealer? So now I have these two, I'll probably see if I have a friend who this would match better. But 1.5C works so much better. They really don't look that different in the two, but on the eyes, it makes all the difference. And I've only used 1.5C once so far, but the one time I used it, I really liked it. Like it looked beautiful on my under eyes. So concealer I've learned is really one of those things where if I have the wrong shade, whether it's too light, too dark, or the wrong undertone, I can't even tell if I like it or not because it just looks off on my skin. And it's, it's hard to tell even how it sits on your skin when the shade is wrong. So very glad that I got the correct shade. I think I'm gonna really enjoy this now. It, it really does feel so nice and like hydrating on my under eyes. So that I'm really excited about. And then I also picked up their Cloud Set Powder in the shade Airy. So this, as everyone says, it does hard pan really easily, which I'm, I'm slowly getting past that. I think using a clean brush definitely helps. Although the problem is you apply a little bit to your face, your brush is gonna pick up a little bit of the moisture from your foundation, from just your skin. I mean, skin has moisture to it. And then once you dip back into the powder, the, any moisture from your brush is going to stick to the powder. That, I don't know what it is about this powder formula, but it, it loves to cling to any moisture that it comes in contact with. So I'm, I've been using scotch tape to remove the hard pan. I find it a little bit high maintenance in that way, but I knew going into it that would probably happen because that seems to be what a lot of people experience with it. I also just haven't decided yet if this powder is anything that special to me or not. 
So far I just feel kind of so-so about it, but I will definitely keep you updated on that. So that was my Kosas order. That total came out to 43. The other Black Friday sale that I shopped was the e.l.f. one, and I shared in my top five, bottom five purchases video that when I went back online and looked at like my order details to see how much I spent, I realized that I didn't even get the Black Friday discount because I think my total was just under the threshold. So on one hand, I'm glad that I only got what I truly wanted. I did have more in my cart that I ended up taking out of my cart, so I'm glad I only got what I really wanted, but at the same time, I didn't realize that I, I was essentially paying full price. So my elf total was $30. It just feels so silly. I don't know how I didn't realize that, but anyway. Um, the products that I purchased were the Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam. This I'm excited about, but I also didn't realize that this was a really close dupe for another lip gloss from e.l.f. that I already had in their lip lacquer formula called Fantasy. So I have two very similar gloss colors now. I do like this formula a little bit better though, so... Oh well, now I know. I also bought their Primer Infused Blush in the shade Always Cheeky just because I'd heard so many good things about this formula. And I was just kind of wanting to try some new powder blush formulas. So, so far, really enjoying this nice buildable formula. It's not nearly as pigmented as the Kosas Color and Light Duo. Um, but I'm liking that so far and I like that it's matte. And then a few other lip products. One was their Hydrating Core Lip Shine in the shade Cheery. This is another color that is not really something I'm going to reach for this time of year, but... Come spring and summer, I think I'm going to be loving this. This is a beautiful orangey coral, and I do love orange on my lips, so I'm excited about that. I also got their Glossy Lip Stain in Coral Cutie. This is a new launch from them, and again, this is another color that is it's just not something I'm reaching for this time of year, but I did try it out. I really like the feel of this on my lips. I didn't feel like the stain was very long-lasting, though but I've only really tested it once, so I'm gonna keep you guys posted on that as well. And then the final lip product that I got from e.l.f. was their matte lip color in Rich Red. This was marked down, I think because they're discontinuing this, it's one of the only shades that was left on their site. And this, I, I talked about in my top five, bottom five purchases of the year, because this I included in my bottom five. Not because it's a horrible product by any means, but I'm kind of wishing I'd skipped it, just because it's a lot more sheer than I was hoping for, so. I was really hoping for a nice, like, saturated blue-based red, and this is this is just more sheer than I expected. I've had a few other colors in this formula over the years, and I don't remember any of them being as sheer as this one. So it's still really pretty. I do love red lipstick, but I thought this might end up being, like, my perfect red, and it's, it isn't. So bummer, but at least I got a good deal on it. So that was my e.l.f. total. I'm still kicking myself for not realizing that I wasn't getting the Black Friday discount, even though that's the whole reason I was shopping. So the very last purchase that I made this year was from Sephora again, and this is a product that I had wanted for the longest time, and I finally got it because they had a 20% off coupon going on, and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Fair. This I spent a grand total of $48.38, and this normally retails for $56, so I'm really happy that I got a good discount on it. I am loving this bronzer. I'm loving it. I know I wasn't so sure about it in my um, testing new makeup video that I did where I tried this for the first time, but every time I've used it since then, I've had no issues. It is the perfect depth for me. It's just so easy. I also love that it's refillable, and I love that because this packaging is obviously so beautiful and so well made that I would hate to ever have to throw this away. So once I'm done with this bronzer, I can easily pop it out. There's a little hole you can put like a bobby pin through there pop out the pan and just buy a refill, which the refill is cheaper than buying the entire compact altogether. So I'm really happy about that. I love, especially when brands have beautiful packaging like this, might as well make it refillable because obviously this packaging, I feel, it feels like it's going to last forever or at least a very, very long time. So I'm really excited about that. So that's everything that I purchased in the last three months of the year. And my total amount spent in quarter four was 301 dollars. So that is the most that I spent out of all four quarters of the year. Just to remind you, in quarter three, I spent $95. In quarter two, I spent $190. And in quarter one, I spent $243. So, drum roll please, that means that the total amount that I spent on makeup in 2021 was $830. 
And to me, that feels like a really comfortable amount to have spent on my main hobby in a year. I mean, makeup really is the main kind of fun thing that I spend my money on. I feel really happy with that amount. I feel like I didn't overspend. There were, of course, there were a few things this year that I ended up wishing I hadn't bought, but I think it's almost impossible to avoid having just a few <laughs> purchases you regret in the course of a year. But overall, I do feel like I did a really good job keeping my spending intentional this year. I do think I plan to continue this series in the new year where I just kind of give you these quarterly wrap-ups on everything that I bought each quarter just because I feel like it helps me keep my spending in check without having to impose any kind of strict rules or structure um, because like I said I, I, I've gotten to a really good mindset with my makeup spending. I do think I will have kind of a category specific low buy of some sort. I'll probably have a video going up on that in the beginning of January because I do have a few categories where I would like to maybe set a limit on the number of things I want to purchase in the new year or maybe even some categories where I want to not buy anything. So I'm going to do some more thinking about that and probably do a video on that coming soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series this year. Let me know if you would like me to continue this in 2022. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!